Hey everyone, here's a joke for you. Why did the Just Stop Oil protester cross the road? Answer, because a disgruntled motorist was dragging her by her stupid purple hair. And talking about protests, somebody threw an egg at the king this week, presumably as part of a Just Stop Royals protest. Get it? Charles later said he wouldn't have minded so much if they'd at least been free range or organic eggs. And of course inflation remains in the news, and I think the biggest giveaway is that the economists and the newsreaders keep talking about the price of an average quote basket of goods, whereas anybody my age remembers the good old days where you could go to the shop and afford to buy an entire trolley's worth of goods. Anyway, perhaps the most interesting story was from the US this week after a midterm election turned out to be far less exciting than expected. The Democrats had expected a terrible outcome that would have been best illustrated by means of some photographs from Ukraine, or perhaps a meteor hitting the dinosaur, although in the end there was no mass revolution at the ballot box. And in all honesty, that was not a terribly surprising outcome given that Roe v Wade was the only argument being made in many races, and that doesn't leave a lot of room for swing voters that may have cared more about things like the economy or their jobs. Most US elections, to be honest, are entirely decided from the get-go these days, with only a tiny percentage of voters actually changing their position on things such as abortion or whether they're pro or anti-Trump. It's reminiscent of the Scottish elections, where the simple presence of the SNP means that most of the votes were already decided long before Alex Salmond has had a chance to be arrested for something. For President Joe Biden, the result is of course considered a huge victory, although it's potentially apocalyptic for his party as a whole heading into the 2024 elections. Biden is an elderly man who at a recent press conference was unaware that his son had died from cancer several years ago, who became lost in his own White House garden, and is generally seen by many in his party as a huge electoral liability, almost as bad as the time that Charlie Kennedy was put up in a hotel next to a branch of Majestic Wine. Many Democrats have secretly hoped for bad losses simply so they could force Biden to agree to stand down in two years in favour of someone younger or more eloquent, or at least someone who could remember people's names. Yet now he seems determined to run for that second term of office, most likely going up against Governor Ron DeSantis. He's a governor of Florida who straddles a coalition of both Trump voters as well as minority voters. And as Hillary Clinton would call them, a basket of deplorables. But a basket nonetheless that makes up a good 50% of the electorate. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.